I played 10 matches on Matchbox, and this is what happened. For those of you living under a rock, Matchbox is a website created for the Smash Ultimate community to provide a way to better search for competitive matches, which follow a tournament style format. Among matchmaking is also a ranked system, a community leaderboard, a chat room, and even a stage banning system. Stay to the end to hear my thoughts on my experience and the website itself. Let's dive in, shall we? Match one, game one, and I'm already experiencing something that I feared the most. Input lag, and I mean severe. Input lag typically makes stringing together combos a bit more difficult, so instead I rely on reading my opponent's options and realizing that jab lock setups are difficult to tech, I take full advantage. With a stock and percentage deficit, the Dark Pit player risks it all with an Electroshock, and I take the game with a free punish. Can't say I blame him though. Game two and my opponent switches characters, which is a good sign that I may have the skill advantage here. Knowing that Greninja's best move is dash attack, I shield as I wait for him to use it, and once he does, up smash takes the stock. On the second stock, I rack up the percent slowly and take the stock with a little conditioning trick with up throw up air. With a two stock lead, I decide to pressure my opponent even more with moves that are quick and difficult to punish. And as he attempts to punish him, up smash takes the game. Match two, game one, and I immediately notice that input lag is not nearly as bad. This time we're up against a cloud player, and man does he love to up be out of shield. For some reason, I go to edge guard as Fox, and we both pay for it. I lose my second stock with bad DI, and I don't want to talk about how this one ended. I have to play it perfectly. Unless he SDs. Dang, brother. We just did it. Unless I SD. Dang, brother. In game two, I run it back to small battlefield, clearly because the stage is not the reason I lost game one. I grab an early lead by catching my opponent's landing with up smash, and I take stock two with the fear. On stock three, I string together a couple combos and nearly take the stock with up smash, but he makes a grave mistake. What? Oh, yeah, Wi Fi. He got Wi Fi. Game three is on Smashville and I start by getting extremely aggressive and gain an early percentage lead. And I also gain a stock lead with a well-placed back air. I keep my foot on the gas for stock two, stringing a couple combos together, and after losing my stock to bad DI and smash for blast zones, I manage to KO Cloud by catching his landing. With his back against the wall, I realize that my opponent begins to refine his gameplay, which helps him to nearly make the comeback, but ultimately I finish the game with an up smash whiff punish. Close one. Finding an opponent for match 3, we're up against the Shulk and I can already tell that this is a good player. I start off well and gain an early percentage lead, but with a passive playstyle and a good use of Monado Arts, my opponent takes the first stock. Even after he unfortunately SDs, I have to mount a comeback. And after taking his next stock with somewhat of a reversal edge guard, I'm starting to feel pretty good about my chances. However, I lose the game due to my lack of respect for the Smash Monado Art. Game two is the Shulk Show, and my opponent effectively wins with Smash Monado yet again, taking each stock with a ledge trap, an easy edge guard, and a hard read. Yeah, just get me out of there, I'm, I'm done. Match four is against Captain Falcon, and after losing my first stock to F-Smash, I'm starting to think this isn't gonna be as easy as I thought. As I try my best to mount a comeback, did he just go for Falcon Punch? You piece of... I lose the game to a well-placed down air. For game two, I select Hollow Bastion, one of my favorite counterpick stages, and I turn things up to 11. I take stock one with an unexpected Nair edge guard, followed by the incidental up B extension. I finally string together a couple of up airs, and when a Fox player does that, you better believe he's starting to gain some momentum. Stock two ends with another KO with... The fear! I keep the pressure on my opponent and have him stuck on the edge of the stage toward the end of his last stock, and I test his knowledge on the possibility of grabbing Fox Nair out of shield. He failed that test. You can't grab that, brother! Going into game three, I continue to hold nothing back and gain an unanswered 113 damage just to lose the stock to a random down smash. But I tie the game with a well-placed back air. I string together more simple Fox combos to gain a percentage lead on a second stock, which helps me keep my opponent in disadvantage state, and I get the stock lead as well. My opponent takes my my next stock with an untackable back air against the stage, but my percentage lead remains, and I win the game with another well-placed back air, followed by a down smash to protect the ledge, which must have made him feel a certain way. GG. GG! Oh, GG! No! <laughs> He's salty. Up next is match five, and is there anything more terrifying than someone who types, good luck, have fun, in chat? We're up against a Banjo and Kazooie player, and this one goes as you might expect. Still though, I managed to keep it close and tie damage on the last stock with a long string, but I lose the game to a forward air whiff punish. Game two on Hollow Bastion and more tricks with Banjo's bomb, 
puts me behind, but I managed to bounce back and gain a stock lead with two unexpected up smashes. Last stock has me with a fairly significant percentage lead, but ultimately I fall prey to Banjo's quirky playstyle, losing the game, and I can't help but feel like I threw this one away. Match 6 puts us against a solid Greninja player, and I start a comfortable lead after a handful of small strings and a KO with up smash. I keep this going into stock 2, and once I see him loading up a fully charged water shuriken, I use Fox's reflector the way it was intended. Taking my stock with Shadow Sneak doesn't quite steal the momentum, and I finish things off by stealing his double jump with back air and charging a down smash to cover the ledge. Game 2 turned out to be much different than Game 1 due to my opponent grabbing an early lead with high damage combos and a well-timed F smash. I managed to shorten his lead by punishing his attempt to get out of my juggle with Greninja down air, but he grabs the lead yet again with another frame trap to F smash punish. Having him at 92% allows me to take the stock with the classic Nair to F smash combo, tying the game and eventually winning in the same fashion. We perform a digital fist bump by entering GG in the chat. Good man. Gearing up for match 7 and oh no. I quickly ban Town and City because I hate that stage and begin the match on Pokemon Stadium 2. Seeing that my opponent plays Robin, I apply pressure and gain an early lead. However, the momentum swings dramatically after my opponent takes my first stock and then strings two nares to steal my jump and sets up an easy edge guard. I find myself desperate to tie the game and end up putting myself in the worst position possible, basically serving my stock on a silver platter. My opponent decides to switch to Lucina for game 2, which doesn't have me feeling any better about the matchup. As I recover, I expect my opponent to edge guard, as it is Lucina's win condition in the matchup, but I was not expecting counter into stage spike. However, I managed to tie the stocks with weak dash attack to up air, and I take the stock lead with a series of strings and an up smash whiff punish. My opponent comes back with a vengeance though, and her back air edge guard into the stage makes me realize I've been conditioned since I was expecting another counter off stage. I thought she'd do counter. GG, well done. Ready for match eight, and oh my gosh, I already lost my first stock. I end up playing catch up the rest of game one, and lose the game while desperately clinging to my final stock. Game two has my opponent switch to Isabel, and you'd think my odds of winning would increase, but <laughs> this is where you'd be wrong. I managed to keep things close though, and I even avoid this attempt at fishing rod cheese, but I fall to Lloyd Rocket and regrettably lose the match 0-2. GG though, match 9 is about to begin, and I guess the time to exchange pleasantries has ended? This guy means business. We're up against Sephiroth on small battlefield, and I become slightly annoyed when I realize that his main strategy is to play cat and mouse by mostly retreating with aerials in neutral. It works though, and I lose the game by trying to close space a little too predictably. Given his strategy, I take him to Smashville for game 2 and develop a plan of my own. I'm just gonna try to smother him. This strategy proves effective through his first stock, and although he regains the stock lead with two well-timed ranged moves next to the ledge, I stick to my guns and continue to close space. This one comes down to the wire, and I decide to wait for my opponent to make a fatal option. He does so with an ill-informed up smash, and I send him one of my own for the narrow win. Game 3 has us back on small battlefield, which has me confused but I'll get to why that is here in a moment. The strategy remains the same, but I decide to tweak it slightly due to how the last game ended. I decide that once gaining a stock lead with pure aggression, I'll start to hang back and shoot lasers, forcing my opponent to approach and potentially throw out punishable moves. This works to perfection and leaves him with no answers. And I take the game with, you guessed it, up smash. And just as I suspected, no fist bump. No, he left. Now, why was I confused about the stage for game three? This was game one right here. He won on Small Battlefield. Game two, I won on Smashville. Game three, I ban three stages and I leave open Small Battlefield, right? But in most tournaments, you are not allowed to select a stage that you had previously won on during that set. Because of the way Matchbox is set up, he is allowed to do that. But if he followed tourney guidelines, he would not have selected Small Battlefield on game three. But in Matchbox, it would simply be a gentleman's agreement so I don't really fault him for picking small battlefield on the third game I guarantee you what he was thinking was I already won on small battlefield so we're gonna go there again and I'll win again and then I'll win the set yeah that's not how it went things did not go as planned now did it match 10 could not have paired us up against a more fitting opponent a Steve player with the most fitting tag this match goes pretty much as expected so I will save you from most of the boring gameplay as there isn't a noteworthy moment in either game at this point I'm just glad to be done so all in all I have a ton of good things to say I don't really have any any bad things to say I guess the only complaint I have is just a change that I would make it's not really even a complaint because it's not that much of a deal breaker if you win on a stage you can still select to go there after a loss, like on game three. That's what I would change. I like how it's set up. 
The matchmaking is really good. I do think that Matchbox does do a better job than Nintendo servers do at matching you up with people who are around your skill level. I like the ranking system. If, if you ever heard me talk about Super Smash Bros ranking system, I think it's probably the worst ranking system out of any game that has a ranking system ever. The main problems with it is you don't know who is ranked number one. I really like the fact that there's a live chat. Obviously you do need that, especially for organizing arenas. That being said, the chat feature is very good. The banning stages and the character locks and being able to see your opponent's name and character and the counter of the wins and losses Stuff like that all of that is very organized very clear i would like to say that after 10 sweaty matches my game has slightly improved but who knows given that my experience ended the same way it does every time i play elite smash exhausted and frustrated to no end i'm not very optimistic but my experience aside i'd also like to say that i think a program like this is very good for the smash bros community i like that the creation and maintenance of smashbox is a continuation of the scene's grassroots mentality and i look forward to using it again to prepare for my next local tourney give it a try if you haven't yet especially if you're looking to improve at the game and who knows we might run into each other speaking of running into each other we have an excellent chance to do so right here in this video all you have to do is click it i will see you there take care <laughs>